Okay. I don't know about you guys, but I'm not an engineer, which should be abundantly obvious here in just a moment. I've tried making myself a pro. I tried making the uh, the normally closed probe with the ball bearings and the PCB board and the the soldering and the holes and the whole probe thing going on. And I'm just having too much trouble with it. It's glitchy. There's 12 points of contact in there that any one of them can fail. Any of them fail. They all fail. It makes your probe unreliable. Maybe you guys that are engineers don't have that problem. I'm using simple materials. Uh, high density urethane plastic. I get this from a guy here in town who gives me scrap pieces for free. So I didn't have much invested in here. This is the end result of my uh, my last one. Uh, took a hammer about oh ten times to get that kind of result, but boy did it feel so good. So I went and I sat in my hot tub and I thought there's got to be a better way to do this. I like the idea of the ball bearings because they're spherical. Since they're spherical and you put a round rod on top of it. It takes very little motion to break contact with that. Great concept, but just not practical for me. It just, I don't know. And it, like I say, it may just be me. So, as I lay there in my hot tub pondering what I was going to do, this is what I came up with, guys. We're going to use three points of contact. We're going to use brass rods. This is brazing rod. <clears throat> Got this at Ace Hardware, cost $2.09 a rod. The rod's three feet long. I cut a couple of pieces here, three little pieces there. These are three quarters of an inch long. These are about an inch and a half long, 1.45 inches actually. I threaded and bent these over into a 90 degree angle. So, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you how this thing goes together. This is the hub. Another problem I had with this HDE plastic. Boy, nothing sticks to it. Hot glue does, but that's not strong enough. Epoxies don't stick. Super glues don't stick. There's just nothing sticks to it. You ever wonder what the cap of a super glue bottle's made of? I'll bet you it's this stuff. But anyway, so I had a hard time getting my probes to, my hubs to work, my 120 degree angle would be perfect. Here's what I come up with. I cut the probe out of the center of this piece here, leave the tabs on it, cut the little notches, leaving a little bit of space all the way around, I don't know if you can see it or not, just so that we have an insulator so that they don't contact each other. I then thread that to a one quarter twenty. I take this bolt, I face off the head of it, I center bore it, I thread it to a six thirty six so that it's a fine thread. I screw it into the hub so that it's nice and solid. Rock rib solid. You could drive a truck over this thing. I would recommend it to do that. Probably wouldn't work afterwards, but you could. Then I take a little plastic washer I cut. You can buy a nylon washer that gets hardware again. Anyway, fasten that on there on top. Put a regular metal washer on top of it for backing and reinforcement. The plastic washer also serves again as an insulator to keep your your three probe contract from uh, contacting each other. You don't want that to happen. Tighten it up, but not too much. Then you can take your probe arms. Trouble getting this one in. There we go. Okay, now they're in. There. Tighten down just a little bit. Push them up against there. Make sure that they're all snug in, face up in the hole. And then you tighten them. You double tighten them. You put, you know, snug this thing down. Now what you got? is a nice, solid, three-spoked probe. No glue, no epoxy to fail, nothing to come apart. Nice, solid nuts and bolts. I'm a nuts and bolts kind of guy. I like to know stuff is gonna stay. I also took to the lathe, took that same eighth-inch brass uh, brazing rod. I threaded it and uh, so that I can screw that into the center here. And there is, that's my probe. That's my hub. Okay? Moving on. I got these bent. 
I just put them inside this plastic container here. I've milled this out. I'll provide the uh, I'll provide the the card file or the DXF files for anybody that's interested in making one of these. I'm telling you guys, I've had no trouble with this probe at all. It has been just as solid and reliable as a dick. You set that rod in there like this. You set this rod in there like this. Making sure that none of the three contacts are actually touching each other, but there's a gap between them. Put it down in place. Now you can see the guts of the mechanism. You've got three points of contact. They're still spherical because they're rods, so they're still rounded. You're still using a probe rod that go on top of them. It makes contact in those three places. And any time that breaks contact, it's going to open your yeah, open your, your circuit and you'll be fine. Okay, you can hear tone. Gravity alone is touching those things. When you're putting these things together, the uh, I leave them purposely a little proud. I told you I only uh, carved it to a 0.1 depth and it's a 0.125 is what the diameter of the rod is. So sometimes they're not exactly dead even. It's not a problem when you put the cap on. The cap presses everything down flat and even and then you'll always get good contact. But anyway, as you can see, just a little bump. Gravity alone is all that's taken to make that contact. If you're not doing that with your ball bearing one, which I could never get my ball bearing one to do gravity alone, then they got a problem. So anyway, so now you know that this is always going to return. It's going to give you a great signal. So let's go ahead and put it all together. We went ahead and installed the two little brass nuts that hold this in and then the little knurly nuts that you can get at Ace Hardware. Put them on there. The hub. You've already seen it's all uh, fastened together. Uh, the points inside there, the clear washer on the top, screwed together tight with the probe that we've turned, put inside of it. The spindle holder, this piece of half inch aluminum, we've taken and uh, threaded it, boarded out on the inside so that this spring fits up inside here. We've taken the cap, drilled it out, tapped it to the same threads so that we can run this nut. On here. Run this down inside of the uh, plastic till it's just a little more than flush. Tighten that up so it's nice and firm so that you get locked up against the type there. Set this inside here on those three pieces of brass. You can place the spring on top. Pull that inside there. And screw it together. And there's your probe. You can see it moves this way, this way, this way. Not much, but it doesn't need much. You can uh, take your, put your continuity test on it. You can hear that's working. Hook them together. And you, whoops. And you got continuity. Break contact, break contact, break contact. That's all there is to it. So instead of the ball bearing probe, you see it the same basic concept of a spherical design for break points. You get no soldering. You get no PCB board. You got a limited number of contacts to fail you. The contacts come out. You can put whatever kind of contact you want on here. I just use two U-shaped uh, butt connectors. Put them on the end of my wire. Put them on here. Put one to the ground. One to your five volt in on your bob. And uh, there you go.